Hello, good evening and welcome to Business here on Join East Prime. I am Beverly Broom. Former Finance Minister Seth Tekpa says he is optimistic that governments will pass the first IMF review exercise for Ghana's program. The review, which ends in November, is crucial for the release of the second tranche of $600 million of the $3 billion loan to the government for its post-COVID-19 program for economic growth. Speaking early on Business Live, Mr. Tekpe outlined some requirements from the IMF and says some revenue reform strategies need to be reintroduced to meet the IMF's demands. I'm fairly certain, you know, that, uh, you know, this government can pass a header because if you look at, you know, the requirements, the requirements are mainly ongoing requirements. For example, let me give you, uh, there are a lot of them, but let me give you three of them. The first three says, you know, uh, or the one says, finalize the comprehensive stock take of payables accumulated by MDS you know, design a payable clearance plan, you know, and lay out a structural reform plan. This was to be done by end of June. This is a contract database, you know, which, you know, the Mahama administration started and which was stopped. But I take note also of the fact that in 2020, the status of contracts and things were published. And the nation was owing 77 billion, out of which 23 billion was paid, right? Leaving about 53 billion. Then come 2022, when the report, the second report was published for 2021, you know, um, the amount went down through payments, but also through a device where part of the arrears were bundled and then added to the to debt, which is part of the debt exchange. There should have been transparency on all these issues so that we know you know, uh, uh, what was going on. So for the reason that this is something that was ongoing, it can be met and government has been publishing. So it will be a matter of, you know, further, you know, that is required. Right. And then publish a medium term revenue strategy approved by cabinet. This is also, was also ongoing. The revenue reform strategy, if you recall, started with the creation of GRE in 2009. The integration of IRS and VAT, you know, down the lane. You know, we have that done, so we have the domestic tax division, and then we have the uh, domestic tax division and the customs division together with the support services, you know, division. Remember, ICOMS, West Blue, and the others, these were ongoing reforms. So why did we stop them? You know, to the extent that we are being required now to set up ITAX, which was going to be the next phase of those reforms. So again, these are no new things. Uh, the, 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 it's a matter of just polishing what was abandoned, you know, and then, you know, repositioning re, re, re it. And it is the IMF and the World Bank who provided technical assistance for some of what, you know, we are talking about. And then it comes to accounts payable and it talks about, you know, bringing back or finalizing the MBAs that should have been or gift list. Now, savings and loans company Sinapi Aba has received 15 million CDs from the Development Bank of Ghana. The loan is to help Sinapi Aba on loan to micro, small and medium scale enterprises at competitive rates. Speaking after a, work, a working visit by the company to DBG, Chief Executive Officer of DBG, Kwame Naduka disclosed that the interest rates for the facility is the same as rates given to commercial banks. Development Bank of Ghana has partnered its first savings and loans company, Snappy Aba, according to its chief executive officer, Kwamina Duka. The hope of the partnership is to make a transformational impact in the MSME sector, especially through a company that has been in existence for three decades. In terms of the money that we're looking at today, we're looking to impact initially 150 businesses, of which a third of those should be women-led. So those are the kind of areas that we want to go to, where we can make a transformational impact. And our m and &E, or our monitoring evaluation, together in partnership with Sinapi, should ensure that we don't do businesses that do not transform the sector. Right? It's also important to realize that our mandate is all about additionality. So we were set up not to provide short-term financing, which many 
other banks do and they do it very well. Our role as DBG is to provide the gap in financing today, which is long-term affordable CD financing. And long-term affordable CD financing, which is at the heart of our mandate, is key to growing a private sector. Meanwhile, Chief Executive Officer of Snap Yaba, Tony Fusu, indicated that the partnership will revolutionize the activities and help MSMEs build resilience. We believe strongly that to bring transformation to our clients, it is not only the financial services, especially lending, but particularly the totality of financial services provision, capacity building, training, and all that is something that our clients need to transform their businesses, to transform their lives. We've done that over the years. Yes, we've lifted many of them from a level that has been very low and um, grown their businesses, grown their ability to take financial services from us. And um, we have come to a point that some of them are unable to um, continue because, I mean, Presently, Snap Yaba has over 500,000 clients countrywide in all our 44 branches. And um, having DBG come in to partner with us at this time is about one of the best things that ever, ever happened to us and to our clients because it's going to help us to be able to serve them more, to give them more competitive rates and again to give them more long-term financing that they have always needed from us and a um, few times we are not able to do that but now we are able to give it to them on a longer term for them to build financial resilience that they need to. The Development Bank of Ghana seeks to form long-term partnerships by lending to financial institutions for about 15 years. The Abo Sale Kinds Fair Parts dealers have given the government and the Ghana Revenue Authority a two week ultimatum to reverse some decisions taken to ensure tax compliance and enforce its invigilation exercise. The spare parts dealers have described the exercise as intimidating and disrespectful to traders. Head of Communications of the Association, Techiado, said the GRA must stop harassing traders who are doing legitimate business in the markets. Well, we understand there are a lot of issues with respect to tax compliance in our part of the world. Within some few days, we've been seeing some in some parts of the country. That is Kumasi to be precise. We're here at Aboselkai where we understand there is some sort of closure of shops. I'm here with some members of the Aboselkai Spare Part Association to know what exactly is the issue here. Um, let me understand, what are you guys basically embarking on today? Okay, we just embark on strike. We ask our members to close all down shops because GRA, they're having an exercise, that's compliance exercise, which they will station a members or officers and one supervisor. That makes three to come in state in our shop. That's the reason why we say we don't want. So we say we are kicking against the exercise. We don't allow GRA to ask somebody to come and sit in your shop. For what reason? Just in the name of tax. No, that's not the way we used to mobilize tax for government. No. So we are saying say the government need to hot it for now, this exercise. Or we want her to give the government two weeks ultimatum. If we didn't hear anything from the government GRA, seriously demonstrate against the government and GRA. That's what we are about to, we, are, we intended to do in, the, in two weeks' time. We are paying our tax already. So I don't see the reason why GRA to see this policy, as you are saying, say, is act of parliament, uh, parliament passed the law, so on so, and so forth. We don't care. That's what we are saying, say, they need to go back to review the, their policy back again. Tax policy need to review it again because this session is not helping traders at all. Mm -hmm. Because they want to start in sector and not this sector of Ghana. They kick against it. They came to Accra. Now they are in Abuja. So we are not going to allow our members to do so. And if they yes, they want to go ahead to do so, we we'll treat them as aliens, criminals. Right. So let me come to you, General Secretary. In your release, you made mention of the fact that you guys are being intimidated. What exactly is that about? They are sitting on our right, putting somebody in our shop. I don't think that is the best. That will not help us because it's going to bring pressure on us. Already we are paying the tax. We are tax compliance. We are already paying the tax. We are already uh, collecting the VAT for government. We are doing it already. We are not saying we don't do it. We are not doing it. We are doing it. So why are you giving us pressure? 
lot of people are not registered for VAT. There are few people who have done that. You are putting the pressure on them. And it's not the best. We are saying that we, we will not accept anybody in our shop. We've seen all this going on. One may ask, have you written to the government officially? Have you written to other authorities that matter? We met GRA two weeks ago at Optagon Building. The same issue, we we'll talk about the same issue. It seems, Jared, they don't hear, they don't listen. Who told them this issue? They say, oh, oh, they are going to work on it. We hear from them. Last week, look at letter they are issuing, circulated all over the place. Means that they don't respect traders. Because we don't wear tie like you people. Abuso can, because our clothes are very dirty. So there's no respect for Abuso can. There's no respect for spare parts. But look at the taxes Abuso can spare parts is paying to the government annually. You will not believe it. They don't listen. So if you don't listen, what do we do? We eat on the streets. These spare part dealers here at Abosokai today had to close their shops for an hour. That is from 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. this morning. And this is basically due to the fact that they feel they've been intimidated by the Ghana Revenue Authority. Also, they are calling on government to review some of these tax policies and also taxes as well. In fact, they're actually calling for a scrap of some of these taxes that, according to them, is affecting their operations and also they are giving government two weeks to two weeks or to make to have all these issues addressed for them to have some sort of space to operate else they may have their shops being closed for some period of time for joy business james Ishen. And that's how we end business tonight for more business news you can log on to myjoyonline.com forward slash business. Thank you so much for your time. I am Beverly Broom. Next.